I'm going to talk about the first early sign of toxic kidneys. All right, so what do the kidneys actually do? Well, they filter blood. They are the main blood filtering organs of the body. We have two of them, and they filter roughly about 1,700 liters of blood every single day. And that's a lot of blood rushing through these filters. The kidneys remove waste, and a big part of this waste is the protein waste. Your body doesn't store protein. And so if you're consuming excess protein that your body doesn't need, it's going to be released to the kidneys as waste. Your kidneys actually get rid of excess minerals and chemicals, and it recycles a lot of nutrients as well. Your kidneys control blood pressure. They control your bone growth, the production of your red blood cells. So the kidney function goes way beyond just filtering blood. Now, before I get into the early signs, I want to touch on one very important point, the most common reason for chronic kidney disease, and that is called diabetic nephropathy. Now, what do I mean nephropathy? Nephropathy is a disease of your nephrons. And so the kidney is basically made up of tiny little filters, and those are nephrons. So a nephron is basically a little filter composed of tiny little capillaries. And so you have all this blood running through these kidneys, through the little nephrons, to the point where now we're converting blood into urine. And so the common cause of this destruction is high sugar flowing through your blood. Sugar is very destructive to the capillaries, the blood flow that supplies the nervous system to the brain and also your fingers and your toes in pretty much all the nerves. So if we did a deep dive and look through a very uh, sophisticated microscope of what's happening, this sugar is caramelizing the tiny fibers of the blood vessels and we're getting destruction of those blood vessels. And so we're gonna get leaking blood. So if we look at the kidney as kind of this vascular blood vessel organ, the high levels of sugar create a leaking effect on the kidneys. So you're gonna be leaking things like protein, and so too much protein in the urine is an indicator of kidney disease. But what happens when you lose protein, you're going to be deficient of protein in your urine. And then you start disrupting the normal fluids in the blood and you get edema. So when the protein in the blood goes down, you start getting fluid that leaks out into the tissues, okay, as edema. So the number one early sign of kidney damage is decreased urine output because you're leaking fluid in other places inside your body, in your ankles, in your legs, in your feet, around the eyes, around the hands. So instead of eliminating the urine, it's kind of backing up into the tissues. And so when you urinate, you're not gonna see a large output of urine. So that's the number one symptom. But number two, you're gonna see frequent urination. Now, frequent urination doesn't necessarily mean large amount of urine coming out when you urinate. It just means that you're urinating frequently smaller amounts on top of a lot of retention of fluid throughout the body. So instead of that fluid coming out of you, it's kind of backing up underneath the eyes, on top of the eyes, uh, in the ankles. When you press your finger into the ankle, you'll leave that little dent. It's called pitting edema. Now, some of you are saying, well, isn't that the symptom of liver disease? Well, just think about this. Well, anytime you have a kidney problem, you're also gonna have a liver problem. So there's no way you're gonna have a very sick liver and a very, very healthy kidney. Both the kidney and the liver work very closely together. And so a lot of the symptoms can cross over. So number one, decreased urine output. Number two, urinary frequency. Number three, ammonia smelling urine, body odor, and breath. Now, ammonia has a very distinct smell, but that ammonia smell is basically just more waste because the kidneys are not able to do their job. When the kidney loses its function, in chronic kidney disease, you're losing up to 50% of those little filters called nephrons. So just think about what happens to the toxicity in your body. And so sometimes people think, uh, wow, I'm deficient in protein in my blood, Maybe I need to eat more protein. Well, that, does, that never helps. All that's gonna do is gonna turn into more waste and create more stress on the kidneys. Number four, your urine is foaming. That is an excessive byproduct of protein. 
It can also occur when you're exercising intensely as well. But if you have foaming urine and you didn't just exercise and you didn't just eat a lot of protein, then potentially it could be the kidney. All right, number five, you're cold all the time, okay? Now, one of the functions of the kidney is to help create red blood cells. And if you're not able to create red blood cells, you become anemic and you're cold all the time. Number six, itchy skin. Your skin can also be dry as well as itchy. So those two symptoms are indicators that there could be a kidney problem. And number seven, which occurs with uh, so many issues, uh, you're just gonna be tired. All right, so now that you know the number one sign of early kidney damage, as well as some of the other signs as well, what can you do about it? Now, this, is, this amazes me when I've seen patients come in with chronic kidney disease, okay? They're going to the doctor, some of them are on kidney dialysis, okay? and they are given no instruction on what to eat, what diet they should be on. They're given no instruction to eliminate the massive amount of carbohydrates that they're consuming. I know, it's, it's wild. So of course, number one, the, the most important thing, especially if you're a diabetic, is to, is to cut down the carbs, okay? Just cut them way down as low as possible and get your carbs from vegetables, okay? Not from grains, because if you look up chronic kidney disease, one of the recommendations would be, you know, like whole grains, cut back your red meat, cut back your salt. Why would anyone want to add grains? What benefits do grains have on the kidneys? Zero, zero benefits. And number two, you need to give up alcohol completely. Um, if you look up chronic kidney disease, they'll say reduce your alcohol. No, you want to eliminate it. Why? Because you're already in a very fragile state and the kidney is damaged. And just a little bit of alcohol is just gonna push you further into the mud. You're really not at a place where you can afford to have even just a little bit. Your diet has to be very, very clean if you want to recover. And the third point I wanna bring up is the amount of protein. You don't wanna start doing no protein. You just wanna do a moderate amount of protein, okay? And a high quality protein like eggs or fish or uh, grass-fed you know, meats, things like that as compared to protein powders or some protein shake with soy protein isolates. You don't wanna do that. And like I said, get your carbs from your vegetables. Have a lot of vegetables, moderate protein. Now I have some really good additional information on what to eat if your kidneys are not doing well. I put that up right here, check it out. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.